for maybe a, a color blindness, they might not be separate the color of the moon from green and all that. So I, I think Dami is back now, so we can actually continue. Dami, are you back? Yes, I'm back. I can you hear me? Uh, do you know, I actually didn't know I was connected, I was disconnected, I kept talking. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, let me know, where did I stop? Um, can anyone remind me? I can't. Can you hear me? Hey, sorry, we didn't hear you. Drop in the comments where you, you listened last to us. That, so that she could actually continue from that. Kindly comment so she could continue from the last thing. Just tell you when. From my my own. Um, I don't know, I'll go up to work and all that, so I just continue from that as uh, slide, so we are going to go from there. Okay. Um, can we all hear me? Um, let me know when you can hear me. Okay, so I'm trying to present. Um, Okay, so we can see my screen now, I believe. All right, design tools. Um, where is that? Okay, so the next thing, yeah, invest in your knowledge. Um, try to read different articles, different books, listen to podcasts, um, watch different videos. YouTube has a lot of videos that. Um, you can watch as a designer all right next thing find mentors and become mentors yourself find mentors and become mentors yourself so don't just find yourself a victim that you just bother and like oh will you mentor me come and teach me how to design everybody's busy well everybody has one or two things he or she is trying to do so they'll probably not be able to mentor you as you would want them to but one thing you can do is to try to follow their work so when you try to follow their work then it's easier um that way so when you find anything that you saw or you found interesting in their work 
you can then say okay please i found this particular thing i'm trying to recreate it um can you tell me or can you explain to me how you achieved this so that's one thing you can do um and you get them interested and you get them um to be able to assist you in that particular area or if you come across any article and you're finding it hard to understand any particular thing then you can reach out to them and they will be ready to help you also you can become a mentor yourself by writing your own blog um or about how you started in design or by writing your own case studies about how you created a particular application or designed a particular application and all of that so yes those are the different things you can do as a um as a beginner designer as someone beginning designs okay so lastly create an online portfolio portfolio is your golden ticket right recruiters will look at this even before deciding whether they will give you a job or whether they will call you for the interview or not so yes it's important that you um create an online portfolio so as you've probably already noticed there are many skills required to become a ui ux designer unfortunately there are no shortcuts like there is no shortcut you have you have to put in all the dedication all the art work, art work it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of patience to be able to become a very good ui ux designer so yes um we're going into practical session now so now we've talked about what your ux design is we all understand what that is we now understand what um we understand what your ux design is we understand the different um steps to take to become a ui designer we also understand one or the other the application of ui UX design so so far are there any questions i would like to take questions before we go into the practical um class or the practical section so we'll be having a practical section on wireframing and um, on prototyping so any questions so far Okay, so Olan Nick Beck Samson says, as a back-end engineer, UI UX design is something I love to add to my back-end engineering experience, but the issue of color combination and client complains about the design. Is there a way someone can learn colors? Because I have this feeling that as a back-end engineer, no client will ever talk about your code so far. It's, no client would ever talk about your code so far. It serves its purpose. Um, okay, so is there a way you can learn about colors? So yeah, sure. You can learn about um, psychology of colors. So there are different um, things you can do. You can go online, um, just search psychology of colors. You can as well um, find a YouTube video to watch on that. You can also take a course with regards design so yes it's um there are different ways you can learn designs okay so as michael says i worked with uix designers a couple of times back but i discovered they sometimes that sometimes they design the impossibilities for me as a programmer mm. Okay, so designing the in, designing impossibilities. So, um, so for me as a designer, I I tend to use a lot of um, design systems when designing. I put that in at the back of my mind when I design. So I ensure I don't design anything that is not achievable by the um, developer or by the programmer that is um, going to code or develop that. okay so i uh, shot as is so i just started my journey in the design field and it's like i've been moving in circles where do you suggest okay where do you suggest 
the beginner starts learning from so i i mentioned those steps right try to take those steps one after the other and for you i would suggest you take a course like a a very um specialized course that lists out your progress and all of the things you achieve at time so yes i would suggest you take a course um all right any other questions so far before we continue to the practical class on wireframing and um prototyping so i wanted to ask questions of what i've said so far um then i'll continue the wireframing and prototyping class okay so um, wireframing i'll just be using um this template here from figma so i believe some of us should have this um if you just created a figma account figma.com so if you don't have a figma account yet you can just go to figma.com to create your figma account immediately create your Figma account you should see this particular file in your um what do they call it now in your design draft yes you should see this in your design draft okay so here is a sample wireframe so what's a wireframe wireframe is basically something that um you use to lay out the structural parts or to use to define how the layout of your application would be like yes without you thinking about colors or text or typography or all of that so yes um, that's basically what a wireframe is that's basically what wireframe is all right so this is a sample wireframe as you can see um you can represent an image with these crossed lines here so here if you as a person sees this particular thing you know that okay um there's supposed to be an image here or a video then there'll be a text here then this um, would be a button that's basically how wireframes are wireframes tells us or um it helps us draft out the layout of a particular application so after you draft out the layout of a particular application or whatever you're trying to design you can easily send this to your stakeholders or clients and they can say oh sorry we don't want it like this you're missing the point all of that they can easily um say a couple of things and you change this um as soon as possible so in this time nobody focusing on oh the color is too bright the text is too big they are all focusing on the looks the layout is this how i want the layout to be is this not how i want the layout to be yes that's basically what they're focusing on at this point not on images not on colors not on all of those other things i believe you understand that okay any questions regarding wireframing so there are different tools you can use for wireframing there's a tool called Bausemic. it's also a tool called miro m-i-r-o so you can use those tools for wireframing uh, figma also helps um when it comes to wireframing as well you can do one or two, two wireframes on figma as well um i would like to take questions on wireframing if there's any before i move to prototyping so once you're done with your wireframe once you've corrected everything and um, you've been able to get your stakeholders buy-in then next thing you want to move to is um prototyping right you add your colors you add all of those things then you want to create a clickable prototype that your clients can click through and they see the different interactions or how this frame is supposed to move to this frame 
or this screen supposed to move to this screen that's where prototyping comes in so as a designer you should also be able to create a prototype after designing it's very important that you prototype your screens to show them the interaction between all of these things so that they understand that okay this is how this prototype is supposed to move this is how this screen is supposed to flow so in figma prototyping is very very easy to do on figma um it's like very easy as i would see so all you have to do is learn how to like after creating your screens the next thing you have to do is learn how to link your screens to know the different things you want to link it to um coming into this prototype tab here you can easily um select how you want your screens to be linked all right so from this splash screen here so we have two buttons one is login one is register so your register page clicking on it can easily be linked to your register page um then clicking on this back arrow here should take you back same thing with login clicking on login will be linked to your login page and the back arrow definitely will be linked back here so that's like prototyping works um it helps a lot um so that your stakeholders or even the developers don't assume that oh this is how this is supposed to be when it's not supposed to be that way or if you create a clickable prototype for them they know that okay this is what i'm supposed to do this is how it's supposed to move this is the animation it's supposed to have and all of that so it's easy for them to see all of that and know all of that and they build the correct thing all right questions questions um are we still following if you're still following just type in the comments i'm following i'm still following i'm following all right i'm going to answer these questions on color um people acting on colors yeah i'm going to answer your questions um pretty soon we're going to get there we're going to get to the like full questions and answer time okay a lot of people are still following all right so um i'll be giving us a short stack probably afterwards i'm going to create a wireframe then i'm going to create the i files of this design then we'll be prototyping those screens um using figma as well so after this session before the end i'm going to give out a tax um that we would be doing all right let me move back to my slides um almost done with this part all right um i think the last section before I move into questions making any you know making money as a ui ux designer any you no know, making money as a ui ux designer all right so i will just be mentioning a few things that we sh I believe or I think we should have in mind if we or different ways in which we can make money as a designer all right so the first way is to get a job and as I said in getting a job you first of all need to have a portfolio a strong one as that to be able to get the job as a UI UX designer that's the first way um, you can earn or make money as a UI UX designer, get a job, get a paying job, a 9 to 5 job or a remote job, whatever job you want to get. So yes, get a job. Another way you can make money as a designer is to go into freelancing. So there are different sites you can, um, you can um, go on to be able to get jobs as a freelancer so there's this new one with japa yes that's a site there's upwork there is fiverr there are a there are different sites you can go to to get um you put in your profile 
you put in the different works you've done so far so far and um, you begin to get um, freelance jobs also you can become a consultant consultant in um, a case um, so you help different people review their or different companies review their various designs um, review their various um, what they call it now review their, their various um, designs or help them create a particular design process or design system you know, that you can become a consultant in design but that's a way to make money as a designer another way to make money as a designer is by selling design products so you see um, all of these UI kits that people pay for yeah you can design a UI kit then upload it to somewhere like UI8 or upload it to somewhere like Oplabs and put a price $20, $15 and people would start buying depending on how good that design product is you can create a design system you can create a color guide you can create whatever you can even create screens for a particular application let's say e-commerce yeah e-commerce kits and you put it out there to sell yes that is um that's another way to make money as a designer another way is to start a design blog to start a design blog yes um those of us that love writing love writing about our ux processes and all of that so start a design blog and make it a paid um paid blog or you put our articles depending on the number of traffic number of users you pull you can start getting adverts on your blog and all of that so yes that's another way to make money and lastly um one of the other ways which i myself used to make money is through teaching designs so um you can teach designs um, uh, um enroll or apply to a design academy and um, volunteer to teach designs you can teach monthly weekly daily you can even have your course or create a course a design course and um you let people um buy because so like um Myself, I have a UI UX specialization course on Creative Fairy Academy. Yes, where um, what people pay for and they learn the course to become professionals in UI UX designers. So yes, those are different ways to make money as a designer. Yeah, so far, let me take questions, questions, questions. Anybody with questions for me? Alright, so I'll start with the previous questions I've seen so far. Um, so let me just give you a brief summary of everything we've talked about today. We've talked about what UI UX is. We've talked about the different steps to take um, in order to become a UI UX designer. We've also talked about applications of UI UX design. Uh, we've talked about wireframing, prototyping um, in brief. Um, we've also talked about how to make money as a UI designer. So now we're taking questions. So um, the questions now form the basis of every other thing we'll be discussing. And I would love you all to any questions pertaining to UI UX design. Feel free to ask from now. Yeah. So I'll take um, the questions one after the other. Uh, starting from the questions that have already been asked and I'll be answering them. Alright, wait there, stop. Okay. So how do I understand color combination? So um psychology of colors is a skill on its own that you need to understand, you need to learn like it's a very important skill that you need to actually know yeah it's very important that you do that but um a lot of us as well do not still understand how, how colors work or how color combination work but there are different tools that help you with um getting colors that you make use of for your 
um, a different tools that will help you with um, what you declare it now getting colors to match with right um, so I'll give some examples so we have this two year picular.co Alright, I just typed that into the comments. You want us to go there. So picula.co helps you um, it's just like Google but for colors. So you can search for a particular keyword that you're trying to design for. Okay, let's say for instance you're trying to design a fashion something for fashion. So searching for fashion, um, it brings out different colors you can actually make use of for a fashion application or a fashion brand. So that's what Picola does. Another tool you can use to combine your colors, I use colors.co as well. Let me share that link with us as well. Um, colors.co also helps a lot when you are... Um, looking for colors to combine or how to combine your colors. Colors of you helps you to generate colors. Um, yes, so you can easily start to generate, start to generate up. <laughs> All right, and you generate different colors you can use. All right, let, let's just hold on a minute for this to load exactly so this is how colors.co looks like so you can generate different colors um different color palettes that you can make use of so yes this is how this is what colors looks like there are also different ones like um muesli muesli dot color um let me see if that's the correct link yeah, colors dot smoothly. Yes, so um, it also helps you to generate colors. I'll share that link as well. It also helps you to generate colors. So I believe I've answered that question asked by Shola. Asked by Shola. Yes. Um, any other questions from anybody? Hi, um, hi, Dami. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, uh, um, um, with you. So, uh, something on that, are you still on the call? Uh, if you're yeah, on the call, yeah, you can yeah. unmute it and actually. <laughs> actually, since you had a question around, uh, from then I'm back. I cannot have a good high for you. Nice. This guy, he come. Hi, something I there. So, Dami, if you can hear me, I don't know if you can hear me now. Yeah, I'm hearing you. So, proceed. Um, waiting okay, for your awesome. question. So, um, starting from. Uh, Okay, okay. So um are we assuming you actually done with the uh with the with the presentation so we could actually go to the next Yeah sure sure I am Oh awesome awesome so why the questions keep coming uh, so let's go into some uh, our interesting stuff but before we go into some other interesting stuff um Amazing presentations, thank you. That was quite a bit the uh, uh, the audience flow with questions and uh, the feedback, which is quite interactive, which makes it more amazing and interesting. But before we go, I think that my first note is that I know it's kind of 
just come to one end any of your slider any of your slider like just just show any of your slide like any page of your slide okay you seeing it i'm showing yes i can awesome so um okay awesome okay so um this page actually um you could you could skip to next page as well uh, i noticed some things around your your designs which is actually very amazing um so what what can, can you explain how you came up with your design for your slide and uh, for me, I'm interested. I loved your design, how, how your slides designed, the template, the whole thing had to come up. So, can you tell us or uh, pinpoint practically, like, how you came up? Was it your high for, for design, or, or uh, how do you come around this design? Okay, so, um, as you can, if you can see the link up here, so it's canva.com. I picked a template from Canva. So, first of all, you need a good eye for design to be able to pick a very good template. So I picked the template from Canva and I tried to, um, what do I call it now? Yeah, add some other things to it and make it mine, like adding pictures of minions, um, yes, and all of that. Yeah, basically, that's what I did. I don't know if you heard that. Did you hear me? I can hear you. So basically, you have to design to develop a good eye for design. Awesome, awesome. So um, I I hope we learn something from that. Uh, um, having a good eye for design is one of one thing you have to you have to have a design. You have to have some people basically just like uh, uh one of the, our uh audience was saying. Aaron, he said first, they think like, oh, I don't have a good, so I, I've seen developers that are settled for or a backend developer rather than doing something just because they don't have a good high for, for design. But don't be discouraged. If you feel you don't have something you could read books, you could check, you could, you could improve on it over time. Even naturally, some people have good highs for design, but at the same time, they read a lot, they combine colors, they make, they see previous experiences, they compare, just Sometimes design is creative, it's innovative, it's, you, know, you just have to think about a, lo a lot of amazing things that actually come up with amazing stuff. So, um, another one is, um, so um, you've shown us amazing color matching tools, just like one of the person uh, said. So in, your, in a simple time, how can you say, how can we best use uh, design in a simple time like how can you best use a design how can you best use um i i'm trying to understand that question can you rephrase it okay okay let, let, let me let me let, let me break it down um actually sorry for someone for a newbie or someone joining this conversation for the first time and the person does not really know idea of how yes he has been you have been going through sections, you have been seeing some things and all that. So let's say we have a lot of amazing tools, hundreds of amazing tools right there. But trust me, basically, some are easier than others, some are better than others, some are, well, it may be easier to learn and some are the best recommended. So how do you think as a newbie or a new designer coming on board, how, what tools do you actually recommend for person to first use to learn this design? We have Adobe XP, we have Figma, we have etc. We have uh, to showcase your stuff, we have things like Dribble and all that. So um, what would you tell a newbie that wants to start design today? How did he get started? All right, so for me as a designer, I started using Figma because um, Figma is easily accessible. Um, it doesn't like, as long as you have a laptop that uh, can browse, yes, you can easily use Figma. Um, so you just go into figma.com. I started um, using Figma to design. 
Sigma has also has a lot of tutorials on their YouTube channel that you can easily follow and you get started with we know how to use the tool like in like an hour or less. Yeah, so I started with Figma um, as a tool. I also well, um, started with Figma. Then along the line, I learned other tools like Sketch, like Adobe XD. I learned other tools like InVision app. Um, so depending on which tool you have access to, um, so Figma requires you to be um, online. Um, so you save your cloud, your work to the cloud directly. You can also install the Figma application and use while you are offline, but at some point, it still require it still requires you to go online or to connect to the internet so that your work would be saved. Another thing you you can also use Adobe XD because it's an um it's a desktop application. You can use it even when you are not connected to the internet. So that's another advantage. So all of these things they have their advantages. So just look at one that best works for you, depending on the type of laptop you have, depending on how well you would have internet connection and all of that. So look at all of these things and decide which tool you want to use. And for displaying your work, there's Dribble, the Advance, there's a lot of places you can do. Some people even just settle for Instagram. They just post their work on Instagram. So yes, everything is still, um, for me, it's still a personal um, choice. Um, depends on the individual himself. Yeah. Okay, Dami, thanks for the presentation. I think that was a uh, wonderful presentation out there. Um, like um, Speak has said, um, thanks for the interaction of your, with the audience too, taking questions and also um, the presentation. I guess that's the best way that everybody could um, get everything that you and the speaker is saying. So, so that, yeah. So from what I'm um, speak up said and the questions I've been asked, I think the back end will cost me you know, actually because I <laughs> I'm a back end developer because I I know how how it to be, but then but that is not like the issue profile for the back end developers. So um Hello? Yeah, I'm hearing oh, oh. you. Okay. So can, can you read uh, the questions? We have like two questions. Give me a one from Michael. So okay, so um, Oluwa Fikemi. So you're asking how can one generate an icon on Figma? All right, so on Figma you can. Uh, on Figma, you can design. Just, uh, it. Well, I okay. okay, can you hear me? Um, let me know. Can we hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear. Okay, so um, can we ask um, how can one generate an icon on Figma? So I want to be sure. Uh, you saying how can you design your own icon? Or are you saying how can you get icons? Sorry, it, it looks like you're a bit far from the. We can't hear you very louder. Okay, is it better now? Can you go louder or? Am I loud enough now? Yeah, yes, please press. You just go on. Okay, so um, I want to be sure what. Uh, Fikem is asking, are you asking how to design your own icon on Figma or how to get icons to use on Figma? I don't know if she's still on this call, if she can just um, indicate which of that is she's asking. But basically, if you want to design your own icon on Figma, all you have to do is learn how to use this vector tool very well. There's this tool, this pen tool on Figma here that helps you um um draw or design your own icons 
so you being able to master this tool would go a long way for you as a designer I don't know if she's on this call uh as she responded you not yet you can unmute your mic to um explain your, your question okay so can we talk about my thank you no no hold on i'm still on fit um Lua Fikemi. yes i'm still yeah, on a question all right so if you want to design your own icon on figma Yes, you have to learn how to use this pen tool here. If it's that you want to get other icons that you can use or download other icons, you basically have to go to different icon libraries. So there's flaticon.com um, that I use very well. So flat icons has a lot of um icons that you can get that icons has a lot of icons you can make use of yes yeah, so you can easily download icons from flaticons.com um yeah i believe you're hearing me so let me just paste that link there for you to see there are other sites as well that you can um download icon from okay so the next question michael sometimes clients request for certain colors but on long run you discover it's not appropriate what do you think i can do as a developer developer or as a designer okay so um for me if a client already has an existing color or um, color system or what do, do I call it now color palettes yeah I try to make use of those colors first of all especially their primary color which is probably a color that they've used on their logo or a color that they've used somewhere representing their brand you can't just come and this because you are claiming you are experts now you want to change their entire brand for them so first of all find out how you can use that particular color you can pick their primary color then find a secondary or a complementary color you can add to it that will make it look good well that's one way to do that um other ways is to yeah find other colors you can combine try to use um all of these tools and find different colors you can combine to make that color look good um another way you can sit down with the client and you try out the different colors you have in mind then you see in that way you get the clients to see the difference or how the difference um the application looks using those different colors so there was a time i was designing an app for um a health healthcare emergency app sort of and for me when i came here and i searched for health all right searching for health i got blue i got red so for me i i'm seeing a lot of blue so i went with blue right then sharing it with the um what do i call it with the clients now clients says and i want something red something that will say emergency emergency okay i changed the blue to red like you know figma now figma um your changes that you make the client sees it automatically right because like if you are connected to the internet figma is a collaborative tool it does that so i changed all the colors to red and immediately the clients could see the changes and it's like oh no 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 take it back take it back so it was insisting of red at first then i applied that particular red and he saw the the way it looked and how unappealing it looked so yes that's that's another thing 
another thing you can do is tell the client to get at least like three users to look at the apps with the different colors both the one the client suggested and the one you suggested and give their feedback so you need to understand both you and the clients you as a designer or developer and the clients you guys are not the users so the users still have the final say if you can get a couple of test users and tell them to look at the app and choose what they would prefer yeah that's also another way to go about that i don't know if i've answered michael's question yes yeah um uh, hello Tony. hello hi I'm hello, Tony, can you hear me? yeah i'm hearing you hi okay um i think we we'll need to like take the questions as fast as possible so that i guess the budget is low around 30 percent yeah from what i'm saying so just like um back to landing up from the nine days um let's just check out the presentation after okay i don't think um i think i've answered all the other questions is figma and adobe x is similar can xd run wireframing as well yeah you can design your wireframes on xd as well yes you can do that you can do that um okay any other questions yeah I, I, Danny, before before we go to the next question so i quickly have to have a conversation with uh two people from the from the line okay and um, these new people just started basically learning uh UI and UX design so um as a new learner or I say JJC in another time which they have in other field don't be surprised these guys are actually badass developers like when I say when you say badass developer maybe very soon they will, they will go and do with it they will go and very start with Java to just Java so what I'm just trying to say is that they are actually be uh being like uh UI UX uh, I mean been doing other stuff around developing but uh we just want to have a short conversation with them. And this person is uh, we have um Aditayo James and uh Sukomi uh which so started learning Figma and um Aditayo James started learning UI UX as well. So uh the question we uh we be for both learners to actually answer so but uh, when we go first which is be um so uh the first question is what inspired you guys to actually pick up design, UX design. It's like just wake up and see that oh this design is the next thing. What is fine and what has been your experience so far? So please at the time can you go first? Okay, hello. Hi James. Hello. Yeah. Hi James. So thank you very sleep. Thanks very much. <laughs> okay, uh, my inspiration oh, has always been Yeah. Okay, the reason I actually ventured into UI UX um, is uh, because I'm trying to move my. Um, I'm trying to see how I can always quickly come up with things I could present to my client. Okay, let me start with uh, an issue that happened. I went to a school, there's a the payroll system we offered them, but it was designed since 2012 and is due for an upgrade now i met with them and we discussed this man uh, this man happens to be from the u.s so he started talking about how things are done over there and he was asking me for a demo before he could make a decision and i was like i don't have a demo so i thought of it okay what could give me a demo what could i use to show this man what I am thinking about what the upgrade. The only thing that came to mind was UI UX. If I'm able to come up with a prototype in a very short period of time, I can convince him well enough with what I'm proposing. So that was what took me into UI UX. And so I did a course on Udemy, uh, but Adobe XD was used. I learned as much as I could, you know, it's a new field for me. So, um, I've been trying to see, I've been picking up interest, I've gone to sites, 
hooked up with some guys on Instagram that post a lot of their um, a lot of their work there. And I see very nice designs. They explain why they chose their colors. They explain several things, and it's been quite insightful for me. It's a different. Uh, it's a, it's an entire area for me because originally I'm more of a backend developer. So I do front end too, but I I have someone else that does that. So I don't really want the nitty gritty of doing too much front end work myself. I just face the business rules and try to make sure that we have the running app, the infrastructure and all of that. So UI UX has been very interesting for me so far and I've been asking myself what took me this long? You know, what took me this long? I, I should have done all this long time ago. You know, I would probably would have made more um, being able to have more clients by being able to come up with quick prototypes and then it will make it easier to transform uh, into a proper application and then sometimes when clients are talking you don't understand what they are saying because you don't have this UI, 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 UX experience you are not in their shoes you know there's this thing I learned about persona you have to um, you have to, the user of your app, you have to describe him, his needs, and then from that perspective, you try to come up with a user experience that is able to give him a solution to what he's looking out for. So with UI UX, I think I will be able to engage clients better than I used to. And I can, I noticed it in some work I've done after my course. I've noticed a lot of changes. I've noticed I'm, I'm beginning to have this eye for uh, sleek and very beautiful uh, applications that are presentable and appealing to users. So I hope I've been able to answer most of your questions. Yeah, sure, sure. You've really done more than enough. Uh, that's quite interesting. So a quick one before you, you go, before I go to this person. So uh, would you say that uh, you've gone through a early challenge and um, did you see uh, as, a, as, a, as a career, as a choice for new developers diving into some don't want to go to coding, so some don't really still want to get by it like us, oh, because you can see my ass keeps going on the inside. <laughs> so, so don't even know what to get back, this will be like that. So, you have got your hair, so you don't even come in out. So, um, I think you actually like design is actually more a little bit friendly, and um, it's, you know, it's something like it's, it's more easier in, in comparing to print taxi as you know, as well, just as our you know, uh, as our amazing speaker said that you have an eye for designs and you have really been amazing. So, so, um, so just tell us what. Has there only been a, compared to you that have over almost 10 years of experience in, in the development area, core development, banking, finance apps, and all those things that you have done in coding area that even make you bad like this, compared to you like that, that you have just started? So, what do you think? Uh, uh, what, what will you choose for people or, or actually to encourage people coming into the development base and the phase? Okay, well, um, I think uh, UI, for me, UI UX is. It's a must for every developer, and the reason is that it will be able, it will make you to be able to give your clients better experiences, right? Now, as an upcoming developer, if you are into UI UX, there are so many things you can delve into, and um, as Peter have said a lot of things about how you can make money in it, and I was jotting down some of them. You know, sometimes I do technical writings and all of that, and I'm beginning to see that, okay, I can actually document some of these things, some of these side projects, and then I can just have them documented how I came about it. Now, for upcoming developers, I wouldn't say that it's, it's, it's easier than the back end. Because at the end of the day, I would uh, want to look at it from a different perspective. Development generally 
whatever role you are playing, even if it's a, even if it's a non-developmental role, is actually very key to the success of every project. So a UI UX designer has a lot of things you need to, to learn. One of it is patience. You know, when you have an eye for a design, sometimes you might not know how that design comes about. In the few past few weeks, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. And as I'm even speaking to you right now, I've decided to take my design a little step further. I delve into, um, I was, I'm not supposed to do it, but based on my office uh, uh, work and then because of the situation of things, we couldn't really lay hands on people. I started doing some video editing and I started doing some animations on it just to be able to present something we will upload on YouTube and all of that. So it's, it's a field that most of us can pick up easily, like you said, but it doesn't mean that it's easy to actually execute because sometimes there are complex applications that require a complex way approach of handling them, especially when it comes to um, uh, usability and the like. So for a beginner, I think it's a good place to start. If you ask me, it's a very, very good place to start. And then you can now move up gradually. And uh, it's like a starting point from where what my own perspective like a starting point into becoming a full stack if that can extend in becoming a full stack. So when you're good with the UI, you understand what is happening. By the time you come to the back end, you would understand you'll be able to know oh when this person is asking for this data in the front end, this is the reason he's asking for it. So you can present it and you would have less arguments and all of that because you know as developers sometimes we always want to feel like ah this guy is disrupting me and you know <laughs> the testing guy to the guy that really interacts with the users themselves. Uh, I have one in my office, it's always a pain on my neck and he will always be asking for some things and I'll be wondering why he's asking for it and seriously I'm beginning to see the reason especially when I delve into this UI UX. so I think I mean it's a good place for all of us to start and at least even if you won't become a pro in it as a developer you should have an idea of how it works how it is done and what is the result that comes out of it thank you Thank you so much, Daniel. We're glad to have you. Maybe some more time come subsequently. Thanks for joining me in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, okay. yeah. yeah, so uh, moving on. So, uh, SK, are you still here? So, you, you actually have, you have another pro build level branded Figma designer. Of course, at the same time. It might not blow. <laughs> so, let's have you tell us the experience. Um, thanks, Alan, speak for the uh, opportunity. Let me do this, um, but yeah, actually, I, I as a person, I started out on like, like throughout the journey. When I started the development journey, I like just developed just in, like a branch or some couple of things I branched into. One of it was um, graphic design, and of course, it has really been so helpful. So and I'm um, this kind of person that um because of my own passion for like dealing with functions, I just love doing something with functions, trying to be a guy that handles the whole logic in the IMC. scene. So I couldn't like have my stay like UI UX. But then when I started out as like front end developer and um, when I started I think I started as front end developer, the first like intent I was um, I started out with I was like just based on front end, like um, to work as a front end developer. And from there, it's, see, the process was very, very rigorous for me, actually. So there was, I did a lot of designs that they would tell me it's bad, all of those. But then, that's to tell you that you are not meant to relent, no matter the comments, it's just meant to like, um, would like help you in growing, because those things really helped me then. So I had to like search and search, start reading the principle, like we have a dozen people. Uh, webinar. So I went through the principles, start looking out for designs, checking out different apps, 
checking out their designs. I don't not even about function now since I have that like I have to put that function um, aspect aside and focus on the like UI. So I visit a lot. I visit a lot of sites. Using of fonts, using of page, the page tags, the um, title, headings, and all. Where, when, and where to use it. All of those I was able to pay attention into it, and um, it really helped me. I, I started. I got the feedback. I went on that make the research and um, on getting. I modified my design and getting it back to the team, and they were like, "Wow, that's, that's great. It's nice." Which like helped me to like um, even like helped me to go in that bit. and. As of now, I can say like yeah, I don't know. I actually have, have like worked so many couple of things in terms of you know, trying to do UI UX. I'm a guy that loves UI UX. Yeah, I love it really very well because the fact that I even built some cool stuff in front end really helped me to like hey, I have to focus on um, UI UX because you are trying to because everything that we do, even though the back end. You don't have UI UI UX that's even like uh, um, like I you to like do prototyping like what Alitari has said do the prototyping prototyping is going to be like confusing because hey I just want you to like let us see this way because user story comes to you, like the UI UX once you are doing user story you already know UI UX and basically that is what is going to transform into different things that everybody will be interacting with that is going to design that is going to even determine the logic, the kind of logic that you are going to write at the back end. But then of course uh, the back end guys will still be like the back end guys of course no matter what shout out to the back end guys. <laughs> so that's basically the key. Yeah. Yeah. The whole journey so far. And when I started I speak my hello? Yeah. Come on, I need Okay, I actually <laughs> It's just that I love to. Okay, I just love to um, look up the things with UI UX. Like, with all of those, I started, even though in terms of presentation, I want something more appealing to people. In terms of anything I'm working on, I love to like, have something appealing to people out there. And that has been um, what has been inspiring me, driving me to like, um, learn more about UI UX. Dribble, Upload. All those ones are my favorite websites. Even though the people that um, that illustrated gave us the links and some things that Dami gave us, I actually followed one of our um, section. I think that was two weeks ago. I was able to like I jack this thing. That is why I didn't really ask that question so that everybody could know about that platform. It's really great. Mm -hmm. Check it out and make it of it. Very, very great. So that's all from my own end. I think that I think that's okay. that. no question. Yes, then maybe you've been able to tell us that that's actually very nice. So we're uh, actually happy that you started an amazing journey. Uh, just like you said, uh, on your idea and time, we believe it helped from that's an amazing success story regarding your journey. And uh, we hope you continue. We probably blow like whiskey as well. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. So um, thank you guys. Um, uh, hopefully, we want to see a lot of amazing people being inspired by these sorts of stories for people that actually have studied um, UX UI design and uh, they're actually doing amazingly well. Yeah, if, if you want to focus on UI design, focus UX design, combine both of them. But for Nigerian market, you know how it is done in Nigeria. You want in the job, you have to know UI UX. You understand? Sometimes you have to be a full stack developer in front end and back end to do stuff. So just like that. So it will be more interesting if you actually have a good one for both the 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 uh the, the content part as we said by the back inside as well. So um it's a really journey, but we want to see your success story, we want to see you get inspired by what you know, tag at DD and Google, show excitement on Twitter about this section, tell us uh our Andrew everywhere is at GDD and Google. So you can actually um tag us on Twitter, give your feedback. Um, on Twitter, what you learn, what you learn from us more, what you like to see in our next sections coming up, and uh, your story as well. I want to see you doing amazing stuff. If you are uh, actually doing good stuff and um, we see it, um, you can tag me, you can tag any of the organizers as well at Mystic. So we want to see what you're doing so that we can actually help you push it out there as well. So you can actually see, you can even get job via 
prior what he does. He put them on, just like our know, business speaker said during the section, he said, have a good portfolio. Yes, it's very important. Just like developer did all of our designers and uh, uh, and all those like Dribble and all that. So um use those platforms to actually have a portfolio so when you actually say what have you done, we want to see what you've done. We don't want to see what you've learned so far. We don't want to see how many certifications you have learned so far. If you like have one best certification, forget to download it to So Guys, you want to see what you're doing, that portfolio will speak for you. Do you understand? You want to see what you've been part of. So that, that's an amazing thing you should actually learn from this section. You want to see that you learn stuff. You want to see that you tell us and be able to push out their hope. During my webinar section, I was inspired by the Google section and I was I really came up with this amazing design. We we'll help you retweet, retweet, we we'll help you reach out and one get, get a job around design, reach out to us at the same time to really help you to reach out to companies that actually take some intangible job opportunities as well. So um, it's an amazing time, it's a quite amazing time with you guys and um, I really love well, that we are really been able to stick to the end of this one. We're going to have some amazing sessions coming up but after this one as well, a bit more of conversation this time around and a little bit less of learning. So the platform is for you to just learn new things. Uh, come on board and get started, not just ending on this conversation alone. You know. want to see what you're doing. And um, you can as well follow our amazing speaker. She hasn't said that. I think you want to say something around how people can join you on Twitter, on, uh, on uh, Instagram, on everybody can reach out. Please, you can come on. Please talk. Dami, let's, let's have you. Hi everybody, so um, basically I just dropped my different links, so feel free to reach out to me, Twitter, Instagram, I'm also very active on LinkedIn, yes, anytime you are stuck anywhere, um, feel free to reach out. Also, don't just type, uh, Dami, can you be my mentor? Uh -uh, no, don't just type that, you need to be specific what you actually need help with at that point in time. Yes, at that point in time, just write, okay, I'm trying to design something, something, something. I'm stuck at this point. How can you help me out? Something like that. Yeah, I would be glad to help you out in that regard. Yes, yeah, just feel free to reach out. My DM is always open. I would always reply your messages as soon as I see them. Um, yeah, thank you for having me today. So that would give us a final word on note. Uh, so what would you like to know about this? What would you like for them to take home at the final stage? Alright, so I would like you to know that um, everything takes hard work and diligence. Um, getting to this point, I didn't just start now. It took dedication. I know at some point when I began, I had to dedicate at least three solid months to learning um i had to make sacrifices like using money to buy fuel um using money to buy data subscription and all of that so yes those things you have to make those sacrifices there's no magic there's no there's no miracle that will happen you just have to do all those things so it's very important that you um have that in mind and yes your diligence now will definitely pay in the future just give it three six to a year you definitely earn start earning even all those the money you used to buy for it and all of that you're going to cover all of that back so yes just keep learning keep practicing it takes a lot of that to become a very great designer yes um yeah that's Oh, that will be all from me. Okay, thank you, Dami. Thanks. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for coming on board. We're very really glad to have you. And we look forward to having you future as well. Maybe sometime when the pandemic is over, this guy is going to be there. So, um, so I'm going to say hello. Yeah, sure. But thank you, Dami. So, I'm going to say hello as a big shout out to everyone that will be part of this this program and uh, all the amazing organizers from SK to your team. Nancy, Taiwo, Samson, and everyone that will be uh, on board and to have a business conversation. James, I need to join as well. And I saw um, uh, 
complete duty at no it was one time here and we did the call. Shout out to him and some other amazing people that had conversation. So um on the final note, um keep up with this video on Twitter or whatever platform so I can give you more amazing uh sections like this and the platform for you. So I would like to hand over back to my amazing co-host SK back to you as right on the um, all right, thank you, Sue. Um, shout out for everyone. I'm the most happiest um, guy on health today. So I've been a lot of people on this like webinar for the first time, and I never ever knew that people were actually joined to this event. Actually, so much thanks. Like um, I don't know how you say like um, this to face son. I don't know. Like the way you say thank you. I don't know, but I think anybody just so actually I'm really really grateful. I don't know how I can thank you guys. Of course, we are doing this for free and keep following us on any of the social media platforms. We are always ever, ever ready in terms of helping out with any challenge we've been having. But then, not like financial problems, it's everybody's trying to, uh, you know, hold up, in the, especially in this pandemic period. But in everything that we could do, apart from financial stuff, um, help, we could, like, I know, I'm very, very sure that if you reach out to us, we'll find alternative to that. And of course, probably solutions to those things, of course, we can do that. And also, if you have not um, joined our platform, the bit of, you can join so that you could be, uh, you'll get notifications of every of our 